Hey guys and welcome to my channel. In this video, I want to give three tips or three tools or three suggestions for those of you who have found yourself pregnant by the narcissist. It's very common, guys. Um, you guys get in a toxic relationship, but they're love bombing you at first. And narcissists like to lock their primary sources in. So even if they act like they're pulling out, or some of them may be obvious and, you know, try to convince you that it's a good idea. And it may even feel like and seem like it's a good idea because they're acting like they're knight in shining armor, right? But then eventually that mass drop and here you are with child coming. So I want to make this video to give you guys three tips and tools or suggestions to help this process be a little smoother for you and your child. All right. And right now I'm talking about as far as pregnancy. We're not talking about really after the child is born, but getting through that pregnancy. All right. So the first thing on my list is do not let the narcissist steal your joy. Do not let the narcissist steal your joy. Um, you know, the pregnancy, 40 weeks to me, that's 10 months. So number one, they're already taking time from us. They say we carry this child for nine months. To me, it is 10 months. Give us our 10 months, people. 40 weeks is 10 months. All right. But either way, um, you know, it's just, it's a block of time. It's almost a year. It is almost a year. But what I don't want for my survivors is to look back on that time and feel like you spent most of that pregnancy feeling depressed, if you will, like you weren't taking time to basically smell the flowers. And I know that, you know, everything is situational and sometimes, you know, being in this situation can have domino effects in other areas of your life, for instance. You know, when a woman is just pregnant, she is very vulnerable. This is a vulnerable time in your life. And this is a time when you actually, you know, deserve and need to have that support. And you should be able to get it from your partner, <laughs> the one who helped create this child. But if it's with a narcissist, obviously, we know that they aren't emotionally mature enough to really handle this. And they don't like accountability as it is. And honestly, they cannot sincerely and genuinely give you the love and support that you deserve anyway. They just are not capable of that. And anything that they give you that remotely feels like that, um, it's not genuine and sincere. It is not genuine and sincere. All right, so it's easy you know, if they're dropping the ball, they're not helping you maybe financially or, you know, you're, you're going through a lot of emotional abuse, sometimes physical abuse, sometimes sexual abuse. You have all these things juggling and you're like, look here, how am I supposed to be smelling the roses? You know, well, once you remove yourself from that situation and yes, you're going to go and find your healing but trying to have a balance in your perceptions at the same token. Yeah, I'm going to heal from this trauma. I'm going to heal from this abuse. But at the same token, I have to live in a present as well. I have to live in a present as well. You know, and having that balance where it's not a 24 hours a day consumed with what was done to me and what I have to heal from. All right. And then there's some of you who feel like you can't move right now because you are pregnant. Like, oh, Lakia, I can't leave the narcissist right now. I need to stay here and live with the narcissist under their roof. I need them to continue to pay the bills. I need to pretend like I care about this narcissist more than I do just to get through this page. I feel like I can't do it without their support or I have to bow down to them. I have to, or I need time to make my exit strategy or, you know, I'm doing this for my child. Even some survivors will say, and I can't call them survivors quite because they're still in the thick of it. But for everyone in all of those types of situations, you really have to work on not letting that narcissist steal your joy. 
And the best way to do that is by not taking their behaviors personally. And that may be very challenging at the same token because you've had you've had intimacy with them even though they have not um, given it back to you. You know, but because you feel that intimacy, you know, your perceptions and how they treat you, it becomes a lot more personal. And then you have their child in your womb and that makes it even more personal. But looking at them as mere sperm donors, and some of us didn't even want their sperm. You know, it's, it's our perceptions that have to start being altered so that they're not stealing your joy. Get your maternity pictures with or without them. You know, trust me, if they're a narcissist, either they're not going to do it just to hurt you. Or they will do it to hurt another supply. But as far as like purely celebrating a life coming in, a life created and a healthy pregnancy. Mm -mm. I've heard of narcissists showing up to late, late to the baby showers or not coming at all, making commitments and breaking them, being inconsistent. And these are the things that they try to do to steal your joy. But if you start working on my number two, which I'm about to tell you, it's going to help you in that. And that's working on your expectations. Okay. But before I jump in that, I still want to just stay on this still in your joy stuff. Because like I said, you know, do your maternity pictures, even if it's by yourself. You know, rub your belly. Find positivity in your life. Find gratitude still in your life, even if it's not the ideal situation. Because it's easy for us to get caught up, caught up in what coulda, shouldas, and whatas. And, you know, if you chose to continue on with the pregnancy and you're going to roll with it, it's best to make the best out of it because stress is not good for you or the baby. Okay? It's not good for you or the baby. So still have your baby shower, whether they want to... Um, uh, be a part of it or not still be happy about your pregnancy whether they want to claim your child or not because a lot of times narcissists they like to hide things because they're dealing with multiple people even if you were the primary source and you guys had a fallout whoever they're with now they may or may not even want them to even know that you have a child coming and they do hurtful things like this or they may deny i never slept with her it's not mine she's a whore she's a hoe all of a sudden everything that they are projecting it on onto you so I really want you guys to find a way to not let them steal your joy and that requires you to increase your emotional maturity and have that shield around you and knowing who you're dealing with and now we can go on to number two your emotions versus your logic now this can be tricky especially with pregnancy and all the hormones that you already have going through you now even more so than when you're not pregnant Okay, but if we're being mindful about it and we're educating ourselves on what a narcissist is and what they're doing, because a lot of times they're very, very textbook. You know, when they are devaluing you and discarding you, they're just doing the cycle of abuse. Their natural toxic habits and patterns and behaviors require them to do these things to you, whether it's right or wrong. Whether it's the worst time for them to be acting this way or not, they, they're going to do it. All right. So you can only have certain kind of expectations for this person and doing anything else will be hitting your head up against the wall and inviting more offenses and harm your way. Saying less to them is always going to be best. Letting your actions lead is always going to be best. All right. Trying to prove something to someone on this level of consciousness with your words waste of time waste of time telling them what they should be doing telling them what you know is right in one ear out the other you have to conserve your energy right now for you and your baby and whatever else you need to be focusing on to make sure you have stability for you and your baby okay so please work on stepping out of your emotions and into your logic and some survivors even got pregnant out of their emotions and not their logic. 
And I've heard those situations. But what's done is done now. And we have to, you know, balance that moving forward so that, you know, you don't have any more offenses coming your way from this toxic person. And mind your expectations of a toxic person and definitely see the angles. Put nothing past this person. You know, they will try to manipulate your emotions. They know that you want a happy family. They know that you didn't want a broken family. They know that you um, may be missing sex. You know, when a woman is pregnant, you know, she is sexually aroused. She does have those hormones flowing. And then you might be like, well, I, I don't want to sleep with another man. It feels yucky. I I feel like I have to continue to sleep with a narcissist, even though I hate them, just so that I can relieve myself. You know, all types of things come up. All types of things come up. You really have to consider, you know, look at things on um, a broader scale and not just through your flesh. Remember that that narcissist is sleeping around. Remember that you have to protect your unborn child in your health. Remember that there are STDs and some of them are uncurable. Okay. So while you feel like you need to go back and sleep with that narcissist so that it could be cookie cutter, the whole situation is not cookie cutter. And I am in no means telling anyone to go out and sleep with other men while they're pregnant. You can choose to be abstinent. You can choose to masturbate. There are things for that. You have other options, even if they weren't the ones that you initially wanted, but they are safe for you and your child. And you don't have to go back to the toxicity or feel like you have to, because that's what the narcissist is hoping, that you are in a, a lose-lose situation, which is a win-win situation for them. And you will have to come back to them and be on their back and call. Then they can come and go as they please, still get um, French benefits from you that they don't deserve and never did. You're already giving them so much by even bringing their seed into the world. Okay? That is giving them so much just by even bringing a seed. And some of you, multiple children by the narcissist, carrying his bloodline down, you know? You've given them a lot and look at how they're respecting it. All right. So let's be out of our flesh and emotions and into our logic. And I know that's easier said than done. And I know that we are all human, but you know, I have to put that out there. You may not always get it right, but you can always start over. You know what? I tried Lakia, but I fell. I slept with them again. I did this. I did that. You can always regroup and do it right again. You can reset. You can. You don't have to keep falling in to the traps, okay? And the best way to do that is going to be by doing my number three. Build your support system. All right, it's very easy when we experience narcissistic abuse to become hermits, to become extreme introverted. And, and if you were already an introvert to begin with, that much more, to become antisocial in a certain sense, to have this large distrust for people, to not, to be so disgusted by men and people, you don't even want to let them in. Like, come on, you just get turned off. You're like, you know what, just me and my baby. But when you take that type of stance, you know, especially given as though it is just you and your baby, because that narcissist is not reliable, dependable, not doing the right thing, we can block our blessings. We do block out, block out the bad ones, but we block out good ones too. And this is, isn't by any means um, me talking about you hopping into another relationship, although, you know, it's, it can happen. You know, because, yeah, a part of building support is recognizing that there are more than one ways to get something done. Meaning for many people on this earth, their biological father wasn't their real father. You know, sometimes it was God and sometimes God himself intercepted and sent another male to be that mo role model for the child. It could be your father. It could be your brothers, cousins, uncles, your best friend, um, it could be another man that ends up actually loving you and being everything that you should you should have gotten from that narcissist. You're going to get it from them. And they will be the father figure, the stepfather, 
who actually end up being the real father, okay? A lot of stepfathers out there holding it down for children. More than the biological fathers ever could or ever did. So continue to build your support and it goes beyond just considering male role models for your child. But, you know, there's a lot of support in your community as well and your family and friends. Yes. You don't have to be in it alone. You don't have to be in it alone. But for some of you who um, who have that weak family structure as it is, <clears throat> maybe, you know, you grew up in a narcissistic household and your siblings, your family, maybe it's not up to par. And maybe you don't have that. Maybe you have good friends, you know. And some of you may say, look, look here, I don't have my families and I don't have my friends. Well, you know what? You're here with Reflection and Progression. There's a big community on my Facebook page. And I'm sure there's support groups. There's meetup.com. I'm pretty sure that they have meetups that are centered around pregnant women. There's a lot of resources in the community. If you seek them. If you seek them. A lot of resources and you can ask your doctor about it as well a lot of times doctors do have they know more than medical things they know a lot about community resources you know you can put yourself into therapy I do offer coaching myself as well you know that's professional support and they can help direct you as well to other support systems But there are still a lot of good people left in this world. And that's what I want to make that point in this in this section right here of the video. All right. There were times, you know, in my pregnancy um, where my last one anyway, where I got an outpour of support from perfect strangers. OK, perfect strangers. So there are a lot of good people out there who want to help pregnant women. OK, and a lot of resources where you can help get things as well. Diapers, wipes, clothes, cribs, all types of organizations. Okay, and, and, and if you're in your time of need, you know, take advantage of these. And one day when you're on your feet, you can go back and give back to the organization. But it's set up there for your time of need, okay? Don't be too proud. Do not be too proud. All right, so we're not going to let the narcissist steal our joy because every child is a blessing. Every child is a blessing and it's a beautiful time in your life. Okay, look at a pregnant woman. So beautiful, so beautiful and glowing. Do not let that one person steal your joy. All right, and we're going to get in our emotions our emotions and flesh versus our logic. We're going to be mindful of that and get into our logic and mind our expectations. All right. And we're going to build a support system because you deserve to have one. All right. Because that narcissist is not going to be a support at all. Take time to smell those roses. Laugh, find gratitude each day, do things that make you happy. Don't just wallow in, you know, the devastation of the relationship not working out. Don't obsess over who that person is with now because they are big time for that plastering that new person while you are carrying their child. It's just they are the messy ones in those instances. Trust me. And for outsiders who don't know what's going on, you know, they're just, they're in the dark. They're ignorant. Are they flying monkeys? They've been lied to. They bought the narcissist liar. They may be narcissists too. Trust me, the narcissist ain't the only narcissist in its clique and in its family. Okay. There are others. Birds of a feather flock together. You have nothing to prove. You don't have to, you know, beg their family for support. In acceptance. Okay. The things that are meant for you will be free flowing to you and will be there. Lean on God, do your best and he will do the rest. It has never failed me and I done my best. He always 
did the rest, guys. He always did the rest. You will learn in this experience to walk in faith. You will learn that. I'm not telling you to wait for something to fall out of the sky, of course. That's why I always say, do your best and he will do the rest. But you'll learn to walk in faith in that way. All right, because God doesn't give you more than you can handle in that sense. All right, guys, so continue to do the work. I'm here for support if you need it. All right, I do phone support, voice call, Skype. I do email coaching. I have texting or mobile support setups that you can take advantage of. I have all type of packages and things available to help you in your healing process, along with the content that I have.